Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. I get asked all the time how snake mutations end up getting their names. The truth is, there's a whole bunch of different ways that that happens. We're gonna take a look at it. You're watching Snake Bites. When it comes to naming new morphs, there's really two camps. The scientific descriptive camp that wants to name an animal purely on the genetics behind it, and then the more creative artistic camp, which basically wants to name something either really creative or how it actually looks. Take for example this lavender albino spider. It's got a couple mutations that actually fall into both camps. The lavender albino, more the scientific, whereas the spider actually is a more creative one because the pattern looked like a spider web. But let's take a look at some more simple simpler mutations. This albino ball python is a great example of the name coming from a purely scientific standpoint. When you say albino, people know exactly what you're talking about. There's not a whole lot of creativeness going into this name. In the same vein, this axanthic ball python is purely scientific. Xanthophore is the color yellow, and axanthic means the lack of yellow. This leucistic ball python is another great example. Leucism is a lack of all pigment. As you can see, it's just a pure white snake. All right, guys, it's Cow's Question Week. First off, I'd like to thank everybody for commenting so passionately on our last few weeks, which were controversial subjects. Um, just want to let everybody know that even though people might not agree with each other, you got to respect people's opinions, as I do yours. Now, since I'm a peacemaker, I'm going to bring it down a notch and ask a simple question. If you could have any animal in the world, what would that animal be? Text or video comment below. Let me know. P.S. Mine will be a wolverine. This hypomelanistic corn is exactly how it sounds, hypomelanistic. Melanin is the black pigment and hypo means a reduction of that pigment. This is an anuthristic corn snake. Again, it's a ritophore that's red pigment that's lacking, which gives it the anuthristic name. Now in the other camp, just because an animal's name isn't based in science doesn't mean it can't still be descriptive. Take for instance this butter corn snake. Obviously the name butter came from the fact that it kind of had the same color as a stick of butter. Take a look at this sun-kissed Okatee corn snake. The person that named it felt that its head pattern looked like it had been kissed by the sun. This ghost corn was named because of its ghostly pattern, but the truth is it's actually an anuthristic hypomelanistic. There's a ghost in the ball python world too, and this guy's got a little bit different genetics than the ghost corn snake. This is actually just a hypomelanistic ball python. This pinstripe ball python is a perfect example of a snake that was named purely on its pattern. A friend of mine, Stefan Broghammer, over in Germany named this animal simply because it looked like it had pinstripes running down its pattern. The spinner ball python is interesting because it's actually a play on words. It's a spider and a pinstripe, so putting those two names together, they came up with spinner. This humblebee is an example of just a really cool name. It has nothing to do with its actual animal. It's actually a pastel, spider, and a ghost, but humblebee certainly sounds better than those three words combined. When you start getting into the four and five gene animals, it just makes more sense to come up with a really creative name rather than listing them all. Take for example this Enchi queen bee. It's actually an Enchi pastel spider butter, but that's just a whole lot to say in one name. An Enchi queen bee sounds a lot cooler. Sometimes when you name an animal, the name just sounds awesome in the beginning. Take for instance this blood red corn snake, but then you start breeding it into other mutations and it starts to get a little bit confusing and doesn't even make sense. Like this aneurysmic blood red obviously has no red in it, so you go back and you change the name. Now the blood reds are being called diffuse and the aneurysmic diffuse are being called granites. What do you guys think? Should it be creative names or should it be more scientific names? Go ahead and comment down below. I'd love to know your opinion. What's wrong with you? I don't think I want to be a judge anymore. What do you mean? Why not? I think I want to change my name. You, you can't do that. Your name is George. I mean, what's wrong with the name George? There's a lot of famous people out there with the name George. Like uh, George Washington, George Clooney, George Lucas, George Foreman. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there. The name's a pretty cool name. What about the f people like Boy George, Curious George, George Bush? My name's a joke. You got a point. I mean, so what kind of names were you looking at? Velociraptor, Grenade, Hercules the third, or Bird. Just Bird? Yeah. Well, good luck with that, dude. Again and again. There he is. 
Whoa, Georgie. What's up with the get up, George? My name's not George anymore. It's Buddha Jesus Muhammad. Have some respect. <laughs> what the hell is that about? Some Dorothy identity crisis thing going on again. By golly, I hope not. Let's get to the bottom of this. Check it out. Yo, BJ, you in here? Are you talking to me? Yeah, I shortened up your name a little bit, you know? B J, get it? My name is Buddha Jesus Muhammad. What about BM? My name is Buddha Jesus Muhammad. All right, buddy. You know, short for Buddha, buddy. We're friends, right? You know what I'm saying? Jesus, how about Jesus? My name is Buddha Jesus Muhammad. Say it right or don't talk to me at all. This is bad. He is serious this time. Yeah, you're right. But I got one more idea. Oh, hey, uh, Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad. I changed my name back to George. What do you mean, changing it back to George? Why? Say it to me. No, no. <laughs> you, can't change, you can't change your name back to George. We legally got our names changed. Well, what would you change your names to? What do you, what do you think we changed our name to? Velociraptor, Grenade, Hercules the Third. He's Bird. Yeah, I'm Bird. I changed my name to Paul. I'm going to kill you. For this week's comment of the week, the question was, what do you think about abortion? And Lemon Annie said, The abortion issue is a tough one. Me personally, I'm pro-choice, but I'd never have on unless it's the result of a rape or if I knew that the child would suffer in life. As for men telling women that they can and can't do, they honestly have no real say in the final decision. Harsh, but give them a uterus and see how they feel. Awesome show, guys. Well, I tell you what, this question sure did create a lot of controversy. It's one that I think I'm going to stay clear of. As for the show, I hope you guys enjoyed it and got an idea of how some of these names are made. I'm all about creative names, and I think it's really cool when a new morph comes out. The community I want to shout out today is CaptiveBreadWildlifeForums.co.uk. It's a really cool forum, and I love those guys over in the UK. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites.